All right, so today we're going to talk about Damiano Caruso and his training data before the Giro. Now, obviously, Damiano Caruso finished third in the Giro d'Italia in 2021, which was a huge uh, result for him, his best result probably ever. Um, and luckily for us, he's uploaded all his power data since, well, forever, I think, uh, building up to the Giro. So I thought, you know what, I've got a lot of time. Let's go through it. Let's see what sort of training sessions he does, his overriding training principles, and how he prepares for the biggest race um, in his calendar. So he finished his 2020 season um, at Liège. He DNF that um, on the 4th of October. And after that, it just seemed like he went back to Sicily, which is where he lives, um, in Ragusa. And he was just chilling out, doing like 15 hours, 20 hours a week. It's nothing too crazy, just sort of a bit of junk miles with the boys, it seems. He seems to like riding with other people quite a lot. So November was pretty chill for him. Did eight hours in the first week of November, 10 and a half in the second. Real easy rides, couple hikes. <clears throat> Um, and then, you know, you build up to 19 hour weeks, um, 18 hour weeks, pretty easy. Um, bit of mountain biking, but nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, and then when we go to December, you can see I've gone in a lot more detail here um, and his training gets a lot more specific. Um, so first of all, we'll just go, he was in a training camp in Taide at this point um, from Thursday. So just three hours easy, five hours easy. And when I say easy, he just sort of goes like mid zone two for him. So maybe like 240, 230 normalized. So maybe lower zone two actually. And he might go harder on the climb, he might go like 280 on the climb, 260 on the climb, and then a little bit easier on the downhill. He's not crazy strict, he's not someone who rides at like 240 normalised the whole way. Um, he'll just, you know, go up and down. Thursday was a travel day, um, so you can see he always takes the day off for the travel and often has an easy day before. I guess he doesn't want to get ill, no, less stress when travelling. Um, again, here, four and a half hours, bit of tempo on the climbs, and this is basically what his, what his thing is. Um, he does a lot of like low cadence, so you can see here is more low cadence effort here where he sort of goes really hard um, with like a lower cadence and then a bit easier with a higher cadence to recover. Um, it seems to be a lot of that. A bit of 2030s. Um, some of these I don't have power data, so we'll skip over them. Uh, and then more hours, but you'll see here like he did 31 hour a week and that's quite regular. He does 25 to 30 hours sort of consistently um, throughout the year. Uh, but there are definitely times where he has big training blocks, especially in Teddy where he's doing like 25, 30 hour weeks. And then when he comes back home, he drops it down a little bit recovers and then goes to a race or goes to um, training. So more of this is just a lot of easy stuff. I think this didn't have power data, so we haven't analyzed it too much. Obviously moving into January now, a bit more serious in terms of preparation. There's races coming up. First race he has is UAE Tour, um, which I think is the end of, well, towards in February, basically. Um, so again here, a lot of hours. Um, you can see basically the way he does it is like, so have a day off Monday pretty much consistently. Um, then he'll do like, you know, some efforts on the first day after a rest day and then generally just some easy rides and maybe some efforts but not as hard on the second day but third day is almost always just like five six hours easy um, so you can see here he did 50 minutes at 370 and then a couple sprints um, and he did some over unders but his threshold he says is 380 um, so if we just look at all these numbers it's not many times he goes above threshold which is you know obviously different to what a lot of people say the classic polarized model that Steven Seiler has which is like 80 percent zone two or below um, and then sort of like maybe 10% at zone three to four and then 10% five and six, something like that. Um, but actually, no, he doesn't spend very much time really um, at like VO2 max really until later. Um, he does a bit of lactate testing here. I couldn't really tell obviously what he got. I mean, he did 430 watts for the last like five minutes or something. So lactate testing, they basically just go up a hill full um, or like not full, but they just gradually increase the power. And then when they get to the top, the coach like prick their ear to get some lactate testing to figure out what their lactate levels are. And then they'll descend and do the same to basically figure out what that threshold is um, effectively. And they do it there instead of a lab because obviously it can put out more power and it's the bike they actually do, which makes more sense. Here again, he did 11 at max effort, which is 423 watts, which is sort of the best numbers we've seen so far. You can see some of these were like decent, but they're, they're not that impressive. He weighs about 64 kilos for reference. So, you know, you can do the watts per kilo calculations from that. Um, again, he had some 2030s here. He didn't seem to quite enjoy them. Um, and it's more just basically tempo spikes, over-unders. He never really does steady state efforts. And um, did five minutes for 400 watts here. So moving into February, it gets um, a bit more um, intense, I guess. Again, um, more time spent near threshold, not much I spent above it. Here's some over under, so I guess that's time spent over, but tempo spikes again. You just see never goes out and does three times 20, like, like 350, let's say, really until like just before races. Again, here he does 411 watts. He does some, he likes some 10 minute efforts. This was a test day, so they seem to do like, Cole Brelli did this as well. They went like, you know, easy, hard, really hard. Cole Brelli did like 450 for 11 minutes, which is outrageous. Um, Cole Brelli only, uh, sorry, 
Kerry was only did like 411, so I wasn't sure what they were testing. But anyway, that is it. Um, but this was probably the biggest day. If it's in green, it's normally important. You had 20 minutes at 411 watts, which is pretty large. That was after a day off here, um, so pretty impressive. And again, you can see when he's in Teddy on the way back to the climb, uh, to the hotel, which is at the top of the climb, they just do like 315 watts. Anyway, again, you've got this TT bike here, did some more 10 minute efforts, um, just one 10 minute effort. He seems to often just like doing one effort. Uh, but on Sunday, it was the UAE stage. Um, first day, which was pretty cross windy, 290 normalized. TT did 407 watts for 15 and a half minutes, and he said it wasn't his best TT. He probably could have put out more if you thought he did 430 there, and it wasn't in a race, so probably could have done a bit better. Jebel Al Hafeet, unfortunately, the boy didn't have any power data. But he finished 18th, Van was 16.50, so you could probably say that's like 6, 6.2 for about 27 minutes or something, so pretty strong. Uh, the rest of these is like sprint stage, 220 normalized. Jebel Jais is like a 5% real easy climb in terms of gradient, and he was 40 minutes at 362. So again, nothing too crazy, just stayed with the lead group. Um, and overall, he finished 7th on GC, so pretty strong performance from him. The main, obviously, separation was Jebel Hafi, um, and the crosswind stage, he managed to obviously stay in the front, which was how he got a top tip. Top 10 overall, um, so pretty big from him, but nothing too crazy. But you can see that's the first race of the year, so he had the whole of basically December and January just building up to that, just slowly increasing the intensity. Um, but hours more or less pretty similar, to be honest. He didn't seem to do like 35 hours, just sort of consistently 20 to 25 hours. Now we go into March, it's obviously getting more and more serious, more close to the Giro, um, and he's going to be racing Tirreno Adriatico. So in between UAE and Tirreno, he just had this easy week at home. He did an um, hour 45 easy, a couple other, like a couple openers here. So you can see he did like 18 minutes at 390 and did some over-unders at 390, so pretty hard. Um, and then here again, he did some more harder efforts. Um, and then before Tirreno, just did some easy um, zone two stuff. And then Tirreno was pretty hard. Um, generally, everyone said it was really hard. And you can see like 250 normalized for a sprint stage. No power data on the first summit finish. It was like the one that Alaphilippe won where it was sort of like not really that summity, but ish, we'll, we'll call it that. Transition stage was 290. Prato di TV uh, was obviously the one that Pogaccia won. Yates came second. He was uh, 15th. He was 1 minute 27 down on Pog and about 30 seconds down on Burnout. Did 5.8 for 37 minutes, which is pretty decent. Um, and again, shows that he's in pretty good condition. But again, you can see he doesn't really do that many similar efforts. Okay, you can say he did two 20 minute efforts at 390 here. Um, but like he doesn't do, you know, replicate his racing as much. He just sort of knows like, okay, as long as I can do two times 20 at 390, I don't need to do one massive block. Then the Sunday stage was crazy. That was like 300 normals for five hours. Breakaway stage, again, 300, for, 300 normals for four hours. That is hard. And then the final day TT, he did 410 watts for 12 minutes. His overall position in this wasn't great. Um, so we, we didn't really, it was like a decent, but nothing crazy terreno for him. Uh, then he had, a, you know, an easy-ish week, uh, easy-ish sort of three days before San Remo. Again, seven hours at 270 normalized. And then that sort of, I guess, finished his first race block where he had pretty much two weeks um, of good racing with a week rest in between. And then San Remo. Uh, then the, the next week, again, more efforts. You can see day off, zone two. I think sometimes he likes to, after a big race, just have a couple days to recover and then start doing efforts later. But it's just consistently he's always doing efforts. He's always doing like 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. Um, and that really is obviously pretty important with not too long to go for the Giro. Um, but April is really where he just decides that we've got to go mental um, and really work the training properly. And he just does so many hours and so much like top qual intensity. Um, so again, he goes back to Tahiti. Um, he's now with Jan Tratnik and Lander and I guess the whole Giro squad. And they are doing some big stuff. So you can see more, more stuff here, more 20 minute efforts, more over under the cadence. They seem to do that all year, everywhere. Um, but I think the one that I really want to concentrate on is not these, the 20 second sprints. These again, is just more of the same. We saw some 2020s. Um, he likes to just, you know, spice it up with 30, 20s, 2020s. Um, but this is the big one really. Um, I think he returned home back to Sicily and he did like, he just went out and did the first climb at 350, second climb 370, third climb 410. And that really replicates like a grand tour mountain stage where, okay, the climb's going to be longer than 20 minutes. But the first climb is ridden at tempo, you know, the break goes, first climb ridden at tempo, second climb ridden at like tempo to threshold, last climb ridden full. And that obviously replicates what it was. It's probably like two and a half thousand kilojoules when he did 410 for 17 minutes, which I think is about 6.2 watts per kilo, 6.3 watts per kilo for the boy, which was for me a real big indication after having this block in Tady that he actually has loads of form. And that's really where I saw it step up is that in Tady, obviously it's at altitude, a lot of the efforts they did, well, they were at sea level, yeah, but a lot of them were also like halfway up towards Taylor at the altitude. And because he was doing such a big volume, 
the numbers here, like none of them are outrageous. Like four times six minutes at 400 was pretty strong to be fair, with like four minutes off. Um, and that was at a decent altitude, over 1500, I believe. Um, but it's nothing crazy. But this one, I was like, wow, like he's obviously going for it. And this is what he's really seeing. And then you can see he starts to do punchy efforts to six and a half minutes at 450, two minutes, 520. And this is when he's really building up to race form. He starts to do those real hard, high intensity efforts, but max out like full, not just like a training effort where, you know, you do 20 minutes at threshold and that's it. And you like, you feel tired, but you don't feel like, oh, dead. These are like, get your gut wrenching. And I think that's maybe an important thing for amateurs is that actually most of the year, okay, you need to hurt on your efforts, but you don't need to be on the verge of dying on every effort. Like even three times 20 at threshold could be a grim thing. But maybe like there's no point doing that. You should just do like two times 20 or three times 15 and just make it a little bit easier, but then complete it, which is what he does. And then when it comes to climb to like the final bit, you squeeze everything out. The efforts are like absolute max. And that's what you can see here. Um, he's still got one race to go, which is Robin D. Um, and he does a lot of motor pacing here. You can see like 290 normas, 40 minutes. And then at the end, he did like some 30 15s up the climb. Um, and you can see here again, 30 30s, 390 watts for 10 minutes. And this was after like four hours at 290 normalized. He did a chain gang with his mates here. And you can also see here the 50 minutes of 400 watts. So this week here, the sort of 12th to 19th, um, this here was really, really like the, the last icing on the cake before Romandy, which I guess is the cherry on the top of the icing on the cake. Um, because Romandy really, in a lot of people, well, if you know what was going to happen at the Giro, then it would be predictable that this man would be able to challenge based on the numbers that he was doing in training and the numbers that he did at Romandy, considering he didn't really taper for this race that other people probably would have done. So for instance, here, if we look, he had one day off to travel to Romandy, one day easy, and then did the prologue. Okay, and you might say, well, it's a prologue, you don't need to be too fresh, but then it goes into a hilly stage of 290 normalized, then this was another hilly stage, which Colabrelli won, and the last climb was running at six watts per kilo. So it's been tough all day, like day, and then it was really cold. It was 350 normals. It was a hard race. And then on Tion, um, up to 2,000 meters, it was an hour climb. He did 5.6 watts per kilo. He was eighth on the day, about 52 seconds down on Woods. But Woods is on real good form, so I don't think that's too bad. But that was a real solid performance, and it was ridden at 5.2 to 5.4 before, and it was pretty impressive from the man. Um, and then the final day TT, he did 409 normalized, 22 minutes, 17th in the TT, 9th overall for GC. And then I guess from then on, he's like, okay, I'm here to support Lander. I'm in good condition myself. Let's go. But obviously, you want to happen to Landissimo. I don't need to remind you of that. It's very sad. None of us want to ever, well, just never want to see it again. We just want Lander to finish Grand Tour on the top step of the podium and just life could be good. Uh, but here again, he just does some 20 second sprints, bit of like just keeping the legs fresh, 440 for eight minutes on a TT bike. All is good and then saturday the jira starts and that is where my episode today is going to finish but we will have another one probably next week sometime about the jiro his power numbers and you know we obviously looked at his training how he's gone from you know november doing some hikes and riding like four hours a week to getting to the point where he can do 5.6 watts per kilo for an hour up to 2000 meters after a tough stage um you know and that's obviously pretty important um considering the jiro is a lot of stock long stages and has a lot of long climbs and goes up to altitude often. So yeah, we've seen Caruso's power meter, how his trains. If you've got any more questions, if you want me to share this, I can I can whack this. I'll probably whack it below. Um, just all the stuff I've gone through. Um, I find it really interesting. So if you want me to do any other people's power meter, power data that they have, um, yeah, I could do that. No worries. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.